Hey everybody, uh, this Algebra 2 lesson will be on graphing exponential growth functions. Uh, the next one will be uh, graphing exponential decay functions, but they're very similar, so let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so let's graph uh, this exponential growth function. I'm going to do a t-chart right here. And okay, when I plug in negative 3, 2 to the negative 3, remember when you have a negative exponent, you flip it and it becomes a positive exponent, so it's 1 over 2 to the positive 3, and 2 cubed is 8, so it's 1 8. So when you change that to a decimal, it's point, uh, 0.125. So that's close to zero. So when x is negative 3, you go up just a little bit and put a point right there. Okay, let's do it for x equals negative 2. Uh, it becomes 1 over uh, 2 to the positive 2, which is 1 fourth, which is 0.25. So there it is right there, that point right there. Okay, so when x equals negative 1, 1 over 2 to the positive 1 is 1 half, 0.5. And then when x, anything to the 0 equals 1. 2 to the first is 2, 2 squared is 4, and then 2 to the third is 8. And so you can see this graph is going up like this as a J kind of curve right there. All right, there it is right there. Okay, let's graph this one. Y equals 1 half uh, times 4 to the X. Okay, you got to do the exponent first and then multiply by the half at the end. Okay, so 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4 to the positive 2 which this is 1 16th now, 1 16th times 1 half is 1 32nd. And when I change that to a decimal, um, that's a very, very, very small number. So it's way down there, almost zero. Okay, and then uh, 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 4 to the negative 1 is 1 over 4 to the positive 1, which is 1 fourth, and a 1 fourth times a half is an eighth. So there's that one right there. Uh, 4 to the 0 is 1, so 1 half times 1 is a half. So there's that graph right there at, at zero and a half. Oops, I, I hit that. Okay, and then when I plug in uh, one, four, four to the first is four, and then a half of four is two, and then uh, four squared is uh, 16, a half of 16 is eight, so there's that one right there. Okay, all right, this time we have uh, negative five halves to the x power, okay? So when you have a fraction, five halves to a negative power, then you flip the fraction and it becomes a positive power. It's still negative out in front. I just flipped the fraction and it changed the negative two to a positive two. Two squared is four, five squared is 25. So negative four twenty-fifths is a point one six. So when x equals negative two, it's gonna be a negative point one six right there. All right, so five halves uh, to the negative one is one over five, or I'm sorry, is two fifths to the positive one. And the negative still out in front, so two fifths is 0.4, so the negative is negative 0.4, which is almost 0.5. Okay, anything to the zero is one, but it's negative one. All right, and then uh, five halves uh, to the first, five over two is 2.5, so it's negative 2.5 because of the negative. This negative ensures that it's always going to be below the x-axis right there. All right, and then uh, five halves squared, five squared is 25, two squared is four, so it's negative negative 6.25, there it is right there, and it's going in that direction. All right, so the fast way to do it, you guys, is just to plug in uh, x equals 0 and x equals 1. And if that doesn't um, give you enough information, then just plug another point in, like 2, or maybe like negative 1, okay? And then see, it'll give you a general idea. And then you're going to get one of these kind of graphs. These are today's. This is the exponential growth function, okay? This is when you have a negative in front of it. It's, uh, it's going in that direction, okay? And then tomorrow, or not tomorrow, the next lesson is going to be decays. And that's when uh, the number B, right here, uh, this number is, is a fraction between 0 and 1, or a decimal between 0 and 1, okay? When, when it's between 0 and 1, it'll be a decay one. It goes down like that. All right, so uh, it goes really fast. So here we go. Let's graph these two guys. I'm going to make a t-chart, and I'm going to plug in 0 and 1, and if I, if I need to, I'll do 2 also to get a general idea. Okay, so when I plug in uh, 5 to the first, I get, uh, or 5 to the 0, I get uh, 1. 5 to the 1 is 5. 5 squared is 25. Over here, um, plug in 0 right there. 3 to the 0 is 1, then times a third. Uh, 3 to the 1 is 3, then times a third is 1, and then 3 squared is 9, then times a third is 3. So it'll give me these graphs right here. Okay, so then it gives me an idea that that's what they're doing right there. Okay, and that's all I need. And that's what uh, It just gives you a general idea in, uh, of the graph going in that direction right there. All right, when you're graphing a times b to the x minus h, uh, plus k, and as long as b is greater than 1, which is uh, in this lesson, it's an it's a exponential growth function, uh, then just move the origin hk, okay? 
So, and then, and then you just graph a times b to the x. You don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. So this just moves it, the origin over, and then I'll show you. Here's, a, here's an example. Okay, here's the first one. Okay, I'm going to move the origin to the right 3 and up 1. Okay, it's always kind of opposite. Look, this deception right here is this negative 3. Well, it's actually uh, minus h, and so my h is 3. All right, so I'm going to move the origin to the right 3 and up 1. And then now I'm just going to graph y equals 4 times 2 to the x. Okay, so, so this uh, minus 3 and plus 1 is taken care of by this um, uh, new... It's not the origin anymore, but I'm going to pretend like that's the origin and pretend like this is 0. Okay, so when x is 0 on this equation, 2 to the 0 is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. So I'm going to graph 0, 4, pretending like this is 0 right here. So 0, 4 would be right there. And then when x is 1 on this one, 2 to the first is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, so I'm going to graph uh, 1, 8. So remember, this is... This is like my new origin, 0, 0. So go over 1 and go up 8. So this is actually at 4, 9. Okay, the book tells you how to do it a different way. I think it's much easier to do this. A student actually showed me this nice little shortcut right here, and it's just easier to explain. Okay, so this just moves your, and pretend like your new origin is to the right 3, up 1, and pretend like this is the origin right there, and then you're just graphing this little piece right here. Okay, and then so there's the graph right there, and go ahead and, uh, uh, and I did negative 1 also just to get uh, more of a, an idea of the shape. So if I did negative 1, uh, if this was 0, 0 to the right 1, it would be negative 1. So right here, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2 to the positive 1, which is 1 half. 1 half times 4 is 2. So I'd go up 2. Whoops, I did it in the wrong spot. It should be right there. Okay, so anyways, it gives me a general idea of that graph right there, although this should be right uh, here, you guys. It should be up to, okay, oops, right here, okay? I just goofed on that. All right, let's try one more of these, okay? So this one's going to be uh, going uh, uh, downwards because of that negative. I'm going to shift my origin to the left 2, down 1. All right, so here we go. It's going to the left 2, down 1. And so there's my 0. When I plug in 0, I get negative 3. And so here's my 0, negative 3. Okay, pretend like that's 0, and that's negative 3. And then when I do 1, 2, time, two to the first is 2. And so pretend like that's a 0, 0. So go over 1, and it's going to go down 6 right here. Okay, so it's actually down to 7. And there's my general idea of the... Of the of my graph of that right here. Okay, lastly, compound interest rates. This deals with money, you guys. So um, this is my formula right here. A is the ending balance. P is the initial balance. This is your rate, and it's usually in decimal, so if it's 5.5%, this would be 0.055. If it's like 12%, this would be 0.12. T is uh, your time in years, and N is the number of times uh, that the, your your interest is being compounded. So if it's bi-monthly, bi then it's twice. If it's quarterly, it's four times. Um, if it's monthly, it's 12 times. So um, if it's daily, it's 365 times. Okay, so here's an example. You deposit $4,000 into an account that pays 2.92%, which is 0 0.0292 annual interest. Find the balance if the interest is compounded quarterly, which is four times, and this is going to be daily. So I'm going to use my formula. So there it is. Uh, there's my initial, 1 plus R over T. Okay, and then uh, quarterly means four times. So I'm going to put um, uh, the 4 in right there. Okay, you guys with me? And um, and then so uh, uh, to the four, and you get that, and you get about that much money. And then daily over here, uh, you're going to get uh, uh, daily is 365 times. There should be a little multiplication symbol in right there. Let's see if I can just insert that right, right there. Boom. Okay. So uh, you get a little bit better on daily on that. 